Hello and welcome to our Analytics Breakthrough webinar series. I'm excited to have Dan Stone with us. Um, hi, Dan. Hi, good morning. All right, thank you for joining our webinar and thank you for your book contribution. You're very welcome. And Thanks so, for having me. Of course. Um, my name is Faris Alhalu, uh, co-founder and principal consultant at Enor. Um, and co-author of the book and with me is uh, my friend and colleague Eric Fetman. He is, uh, Eric is our uh, senior trainer and coach at Enor and of course and a co-author on the book. Hi Eric. Hey Ferris. Hey Dan, thanks for joining and thanks for folks who are joining live or listening to the recorded session. All right, so for those of you who don't know Dan, Dan is a lead product manager for user-centric analysis and audience marketing at Google Analytics. We've, we've known Dan for a number of years, um, um, a lot of strong background in, uh, in this space, uh, been with, with Google for, for a number of years and met him at conferences and at events, so we were really excited when he, he agreed to participate and contribute to the book. Uh, the topic of, of remarketing is, um, it might have been new a few years ago, it's, it's in, in full swing now, we see it, most of our clients, people we spoke with in the industry are adopting remarketing, but of course, uh, there's always room for improvement and to get more out of the platform. So we're really excited to, to learn more from Dan today. Eric, back to you. Thank you, Ferris. For Participants in the webinar today, if you have questions for Dan, please enter them into the question panel in GoToWebinar, and Ferris and I will make sure to monitor any incoming questions. Advanced remarketing with Google Analytics. So Dan is really in the, the thick of all developments with remarketing. Remarketing is a top of mind topic for any of us in analytics and marketing. It's maybe one of the most important junctures between analytics and, and marketing, and Google Analytics provides a lot of powerful capabilities for enabling very targeted remarketing in a variety of ways, which Dan is here to discuss with us today. So just to bring up the contribution that Dan was nice enough to make to the Google Analytics Breakthrough book. Here is Dan's contribution about remarketing. Dan also has some updates for us since the book was published, which was September of last year. So things evolve quickly in the Google Analytics world. So Dan will have some, some interesting updates for us today. And with that, Dan, could you tell us a little bit more about the your contribution in, in the book and what we're looking at for remarketing now and going forward. Sure. Um, so remarketing can be a really deep topic um, and I tried to make sure that there was uh, some content for those of us who are just getting started with this tactic or using uh, this tactic in Google Analytics. Uh, as well as to provide some pointers to resources for more advanced uses, since remarketing is uh, really a starting point, uh, but it also offers an opportunity for lots of experimentation with different uh, marketing, messaging, uh, personalization strategies. Uh, so it's really easy to start going deeper, and in particular use that analytics data that you have access to, um, to really up-level a lot of your marketing campaigns. Personalization, Dan, could you could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I think a, a lot of us, as you were saying, remarketing, you kind of can approach it on a lot of levels. And I think at this point, most of us in analytics marketing world have had at least some exposure to the principles of remarketing or retargeting, as it's some, sometimes re referred to. What are we looking at in terms of going beyond okay, someone landed on my website, they didn't convert, and I am going to, to show them an ad. That's great. That's a great place to start. And that in itself can be very effective sometimes. But what are we looking at in terms of greater granularity and greater 
personalization and remarketing? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so as you mentioned, um, remarketing sort of started as a, um, a basic tactic for plugging funnel leaks uh, on my site or in my app uh, for users who didn't convert. Um, but what we've seen over the past several years, especially using some of the analytics capabilities uh, to build more precise audiences, is uh, a couple other types of uses for remarketing. Uh, specifically, using remarketing to provide better experiences to your customers. And this is where we start touching on some of the, uh, the activities that are more like personalization. Uh, of course, when you're remarketing with Google, there's a minimum size threshold for an audience before it is targetable. Uh, but you can still do things that really um, thrill your customers when you, for example, uh, follow up to new customers with suggestions for uh, tutorial videos, uh, which we've had with uh, Marketo or um, I think Optimizely. Um, you can follow up with customers who filed a, a support ticket request to ask them, uh, did we solve your problem? And because most end users are pretty used to um, advertisements that are not that great uh, or are just trying to prompt them to take an action, they're really blown away when you actually offer them useful information. And remarketing offers an amazing opportunity to do just that. So that's one very different way. Uh, of using remarketing. And the other way that I'll mention uh, of using remarketing effectively is through the use of what in Google we call similar audiences, where you're basically able to define an audience uh, using your own analytics or AdWords data, and then Google will attempt to auto-expand that audience to encompass other users who look like the ones on that list. So a really common uh, use case although the sky's the limit here with your imagination, is uh, to take a list of your top purchasers or your uh, highest value customers and build that list using your analytics data. You probably have some custom dimensions for lifetime value or maybe you just are using revenue greater than you know $1,000 or $100. Build that list and push it to AdWords and wait for it to generate a similar audience list and use that to prospect for customers who have never interacted with your site or with your brand, but who exhibit very similar characteristics to your best purchasers. That's very interesting, Dan. So, and I, 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 we probably don't think in terms of custom dimensions enough for remarketing. Certainly in all of the, the, the trainings, the implementations that we do, on GA, we, we emphasize the, the importance of custom dimensions. We like to say that custom dimensions help Google Analytics speak, speak your language. I think we think of it more in terms of analytics directly and not maybe not enough in terms of, in terms of marketing, but that is, that is a really important point that we could take any type of backend anonymous, of course, user classification, bring that into Google Analytics and then expand that through through similar audiences. Have uh, have have we seen good success with that with the with the similar audience strategy? Um, yeah, I, I would say uh, the similar audiences that are generated from Google Analytics uh, within Google tend to be the most uh, high performing similar audiences that Google generates. And within those, the top performing similar audiences from Google Analytics tend to be the ones that are using your custom business data, uh, particularly where you understand your users better than GA or Google does. So okay. any time that you can bring in that um, sort of understanding for uh, what you're trying to do, uh, who these users are, if you've identified them before, that is really, really powerful. Okay, okay, that's that, that's interesting. So if you're saying that we know in, in real terms that this 10% of the folks that we have in our CRM, we are our highest, our highest value uh, customers 
Google, the, the, the ad networks can find other people who have not interacted with you who are exhibiting similar behavior, have similar characteristics so that you're, you're essentially finding the same audience. Is that basically how it works? Yep. And uh, also, it, it's worth just mentioning that um, even without similar audiences, those lists using custom dimensions are often very high value lists for you to target or for you to target differently because often you know something more about these users so you might want to re-engage with them with different creative or call to action. Right, right, and that, that, that type of, uh, you know, as, a, as important as segmentation is in our analysis, we, we should be thinking in terms of segmentation for, for remarketing as well. Exactly. And in a lot of you know working with clients, Dan, you know it's a lot of a lot of time. You know, you talk about audiences, and until you know, sometimes until they see it, and and you show an example of you can so easily create a segment, right, based on maybe the non bouncers and and those who did not add it to card, but that did not complete, or those who looked at a specific type of content, let's say in a in a publisher. Um, perspective, all especially for 360 users, all, all that you know, the ease of of creation, creating a segment, you know, that audience, and making that accessible, available to to the other um, you know uh, components of the stack. Let's say w whether it be a double click, um, you know, campaign ma manager or double click bid manager, or, or for publisher, you know, DFP, the ability of sort of on the fly creating an audience and natively have have that available to these other systems. I think that's a very, very powerful use case um, in, in sort of activating the data, right? You can just not just look in the back view mirror what happened yesterday, but I can, you know, take action with, with this data. So that, those are, I know those are 360 specific use cases, but let's see, very, very uh, powerful um, use cases with with, with, with this uh, this kind of um, implementation. Yeah, um, I agree. So I, I think it's all about um, taking steps towards making your analytics data more actionable. Uh, so you can learn faster, you can improve the efficacy of your marketing or all of your uh, demand generation activities. And, and to your statement, um, the ability to turn a segment into an audience easily uh, is just a, a couple of clicks in Google Analytics uh, from once you've built the segment, and it's available to all 360 as well as standard customers. Oh, very, very powerful stuff. Yes, yeah, so and the behavioral aspect of that is is very powerful in terms of how granular we could get in terms of actions that users did or did not take they got to a certain point in let's say an e-commerce checkout funnel and also the the scope is very the, the you know the fact that we could set scope to session scope or user scope is also very useful because we can avoid remarketing to people who maybe didn't complete a purchase in one session but then completed a purchase in the next day so the scopes are very very useful as well in the in the audience definitions for for remarketing yeah, there's certainly a lot of um, power in segmentation, and I think one of the, the challenges that we all uh, need to sort of navigate is figuring out what is the level of complexity that is required for the particular task at hand. And often starting simpler and then building complexity as uh, it's required is a really good approach versus starting out and saying, I want to create every single segment that I could possibly ever use, and then kind of start targeting them, uh, it quickly becomes overwhelming. Speaking of complexity, even though we may be advising against too much complexity too soon, but speaking of complexity, I think for a lot of us, dynamic remarketing is very appealing. If you're, if you're uh, many retail scenarios, we probably don't want to retarget just generally come back to whatever it is and buy something we want to say book this specific vacation or purchase this specific book or offer a, a more specific call to action that dynamic remarketing would 
would allow. And I think that the dynamic remarketing capabilities are maybe not as, uh, the knowledge of, of those capabilities is maybe not as widespread as it as it could be. And it's, it, it, although it does take, you know, significant additional implementation steps, I think it's important for, for folks to, to be aware that there is the, the dynamic remarketing capability. So Dan, could, could you just speak a little bit more about that as well? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so uh, for anyone not familiar with dynamic remarketing, uh, dynamic remarketing is Google's solution to offer advertisers who have many different products uh, the ability to re-engage with their users with the specific products or services that they interacted with. So the origin of this is that uh, you have uh, retailers who have a 10,000 product catalog and instead of just re-engaging with the users who were looking at a TV with a generic uh, come back and buy from us uh, advertisement, we want to re-engage with them with the TV that they looked at and other TVs that they might um, be considering based on their uh, the co-purchase behavior of other users who looked at that TV. So whenever you find yourself having lots of different uh, options that a user might be looking through uh, on your site, then dynamic remarketing can make a lot of sense. And a, a lot of times we think about this in the lens of retail, which is a, a very obvious example. Uh, but lots of other verticals can benefit from dynamic marketing. For example, uh, with travel, you might have different vacation packages, different flight patterns, uh, different uh, hotel and uh, car bookings. Uh, in jobs or listings, you might have many different jobs uh, that a user might be looking at. So just think about your site um, and ask yourself, is it worth it to me to make basically a segment for every single uh, set of behaviors that I want to target, or is it worth trying to automate some of that with dynamic remarketing? And then once you actually get into dynamic remarketing, um, there is some complexity to set it up. It often does require some tagging changes because basically you have to figure out a way to tell AdWords, which is where the dynamic remarketing uh, in general is happening, which specific products the user interacted with. And so there are a couple ways to do it. One is uh, just using the AdWords uh, remarketing tag, but often you would want to be able to uh, use the same data you have in reporting for uh, remarketing as well. And that's where you would go through uh, Google Analytics flow to essentially um, define the mapping from your Google Analytics data primarily what product IDs you're getting in Google Analytics, and then map them to the appropriate schema that AdWords uses. So we have a, a set of help docs on this topic. Uh, it can get a, a little bit challenging, uh, especially if you're diving in for the first time. But essentially um, what you would do is you would figure out what vertical do you want to do dynamic remarketing for. And there are a number of about 10 different verticals uh, they each have their own schema. And once you decide that vertical, then that determines the schema that you need to map your analytics data from into AdWords. And once you decide that, you need to make sure that um, all of that data is tagged and flowing into Google Analytics. And then you would go to the dynamic attributes section under audience definitions, which is basically the same menu in which you create your audiences. And you want to make sure that you have your attribute defined. And this is what is basically saying this data from analytics gets pushed into AdWords in the appropriate format so that you can do dynamic remarketing. Yeah, and the schemas are the schemas are helpful. They're they're uh, uh, it's, it's nice to have those starting points mapped out. There is a custom schema that's available. You can build a custom schema if your industry is not represented in the existing schemas, Dan, right? Yep, uh, that's a really good point. And we've seen uh, all types of uses of the custom schema uh, when we want to automate some um, very interesting and often high value use case for dynamic or marketing. Dan, if we 
switch over to 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 your end. You have a couple of things to to show us within the I, I believe within the demo account for GA. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and switch it over to to Dan for a few minutes. Okay. Great. Can you see my uh, demo account screen? Yes, we can. All right. So uh, I wanted to, um, and I offered to share a couple updates since um, I contributed for the book that are related to remarketing and might be really helpful if you have gone through the book, you're interested in up-leveling your remarketing. Um, there are three features that we've launched since then that um, might further help you. And the account that I'm showing has is the Google Merchandise Store. Uh, this is a 360 account, uh, but all of the features that I'm going to be showing are available for uh, both Analytics 360 customers as well as standard. And everyone does have access to this demo account. If you just Google Google Analytics demo account, you, you can get access to this demo data, which is very helpfully provided to, to all GA users. Yeah, I would uh, really recommend getting access to the demo account. Uh, it's a really great way to actually see some of the data in action. Yeah, we, we refer to it all the time. Awesome. All right, and also just reinforcing one of um, Eric's statements earlier today, um, just showing how you can create a segment in analytics. This is the shopping behavior report where you can see your funnel behavior. And I just created a funnel segment from clicking on this report for uh, sessions with product use. And then from this dropdown, I can choose build audience. And what this will do is it will take me into the audience building UI with this segment definition pre-populated. And so you'll see it's loading here. And now it has pre-populated my audience definition with shopping stage equals product view. And all I have to do is give this a name. So you're telling me then I didn't have to worry about regular expressions at all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it makes it a really nice way of interactively defining a segment and then turning it into an audience. You're making at least one of us on the call, you're making at least one of us very happy. I don't know. <laughs> Eric loves regular expressions, so. <laughs> yeah, any, any opportunity. <laughs> you can still use regular expressions, um, but even when you've gone through all the hassle of defining a regular expression, let's say you're using it in analytics reporting, uh, it's still can help save you some time to just click the build audience button once you want to turn it into an audience. For sure. All right, so going through this flow, um, this is the first one of those three features that I mentioned that is new. So rolling out actually this week, uh, we have a, a new destinations picker where you can uh, choose to publish to multiple destinations. Okay, cool. So this is, yeah, this is brand new functionality. Uh, you can now see that I can have the same uh, audience published to both AdWords as well as my Google Analytics account. And just for fun, I'm going to also publish it to Optimize 360. Uh, this is a 360 only feature, but it is a really powerful way going back to the notion of personalization. I can push audiences from analytics and now start using them beyond just remarketing, but I can actually use them for on-site personalization and experimentation. Right. Right. And then just to mention, within even within AdWords, there's a lot of variety because we actually use our remarketing audiences for retargeting on YouTube, and we've actually seen you know very good results for that. So we could take advantage of the remarketing audience. It's not just in AdWords uh, proper, but also also within YouTube. Yep, um, that's a good point. AdWords has access to uh, a lot of inventory across different sources, especially when you think about that AdWords uh, 
encompasses not only what we had traditionally called display, but also uh, search um, using RLSA or remarketing list for right. search ads. Right. And a little uh, tip here, you can actually see uh, as this audience starts accumulating users, this number in eligibility will start increasing. Uh, you'll see the display and search audience size start increasing. Nice. So that's uh, feature number one, uh, which we're calling uh, multi-destination support. You can actually see now over here all the destinations that you've published some of these lists to. Great. Um, the and, next and, and, uh, I'm okay. sorry, Dan, when we say publish to analytics, that means that we're using this. What's the difference between an audience and analytics and just a, a segment? Yeah, that's a really good question. So this is another uh, brand new feature that is starting to roll out over the next month or so, uh, which is what we're calling audiences in analytics. And this is our demo account, so it, it has uh, all kinds of nonsense set up. But as soon as uh, this loads, it's going to take us to a new audiences report, which is basically um, taking the results of which users were added to a remarketing list and storing that as almost think about it as a custom dimension in analytics. Okay. So let me actually remove this segment that I applied previously for the, um, the product views. And now this is going to take me, I had chosen a particular audience, but let me just show you what this looks like without an audience applied. So this is going to look like a normal report in analytics where the primary dimension is audience. Oh, nice. So here are my audiences. These are all the audiences that I have published wow. to Google Analytics. That is amazing. That yeah, is really it makes something. It, yeah. Uh, what, um, if, what if there's overlap in the audience definitions? Would, would one user potentially, one user or one session mm -hmm. potentially show up in multiple rows? Yes, um, okay. certainly. So a, a user can belong to multiple audiences simultaneously. Okay. In fact, we expect that to be the case quite often. Okay, which is, which is different than any other table report that we've seen up until now, if I'm I, I believe, because like landing page would be, you only have one landing page per session. Uh, whatever yep. the row is, okay. So that, no, this is, this is, this is amazing to see. Yeah, we were really excited. Um, this is one of the features that underlies uh, some of our investments into Google Analytics infrastructure to support more user-centric reporting. So yeah. if any of you out there are, are ag experts on segmentation today, you might be aware of some of the limitations where like a segment will only evaluate over behavior that happens within the particular reporting date range. So many of us have been frustrated in the past by trying to build a segment of all my past purchasers, when in reality it will only look at the uh, purchasers during this reporting date range. Okay. And audiences allow us to um, overcome that limitation and actually look at all of my past purchasers since that audience was defined. And then I can look at their activity in any reporting date range, regardless of whether a purchase occurred. Okay, so out of the box, the audiences are, are user scope and not, yes. not session scope. And do you not have the ability to make them session scope? Or are they kind of hard coded as, as user scope? Ah, that's a really good question. Um, so, yeah, think about it as, uh, by default, it's a user-scoped custom dimension that is basically set based on your definition. Okay. And then that's a really good point where sometimes you might want to actually remove users from an audience. So uh, an example could be current shoppers, where I want to add users only when they've viewed a product, but they haven't yet purchased. Okay. Okay. And that you could think about as sort of like a session scoped custom dimension. So this is possible with uh, the, the second feature I wanted to tell you about, which is called uh, state-based audiences. So uh, what state-based audiences allow you to do is it allows you to define 
when users are added to audiences as well as when they are removed from audiences. So actually I'm going to go through and show you a state-based audience that I've already created. So the one I was just showing was um, current shoppers. And then you can also drill down on these audiences in this report. You can see their uh, affinity categories, age, gender, acquisition channel, etc. Okay. You can also apply these as segments in your other GA reports. Mm -hmm. But let me show you how this was built. So here's my audience. That's what's showing up in analytics. And when I go into the definition, you'll see something that uh, you're used to in segmentation, but is a relatively new feature in analytics. So what's going on here is I've defined a condition for uh, sessions with product list views or product detail views and exclude sessions with transactions. Okay. And so what this ends up doing is it adds users whenever they meet this condition and it removes users whenever they meet this condition. And this is what we call a state-based audience which allows you to basically define conditions for when users enter as well as exit this audience. Meaning that there's an exclude condition. Exactly. Okay. Um, there's another toggle which allows you to define when users are excluded, can they ever come back into the list if they do the include action again. And so that's what this is for. Right now I don't have it checked because I want users to be able to go from having purchased to being in the current shoppers audience again when they start looking at products again. And this was a common use case that we were seeing coming up in uh, a lot of businesses where they have a lot of repeat usage and okay. purchases. And you want to start remarketing to users only when they are in the, the shopping stage. So that isn't based on timeout, that is based on one of the conditions being met again? The yes. include condition being met again? Okay. Exactly. Okay. Good stuff. This is really thanks for sharing this, Dan. This and this is going to be announced and rolled out soon. You mentioned. Yeah, the state-based audiences are already rolled out. Uh, the multi-destinations that I showed before uh, are rolling out over the next week or so. Oh, nice. And the audiences in reporting is rolling out in May. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing this. Uh, so we'll. Uh... Uh, all of you attending today, you, you got a preview, uh, and then once we publish this on our blog, um, people who watch this later can also be ready for these new features. Awesome, the good stuff. And Dan, were those those were the the three updates that you had for us today? Um, that was the uh, number one and number two, and I just wanted to quickly show you uh, another feature that has rolled out that's called session quality uh, for any customer that has about a thousand transactions over the last 30 days analytics will start attempting to calculate uh, session quality so the proximity to conversions for all of your traffic and the the cool thing about this is you can use this to actually create a segment and then turn it into an audience if you want even more finely tuned audience definitions okay yeah, actually, in in the in the book, Brian Clifton talks about an engagers segment. There's a uh, we have a section on an engager segment where he defines segment based on behaviors that are high high value behaviors getting close to conversion. So it looks like that that's what the audience quality is is pointing towards as well. Yep, exactly. Uh, we wanted to provide the tools to do this. Uh, in case you hadn't had uh, a way previously of defining sort of um, level of engagement. And then in the, in the future, we're working on some more uh, interesting predictive features that are more future looking. Nice. Well, good. Well, uh, we're getting, actually, we're already past the 30 minute mark. So um, I think we've answered all the questions um, just for um, again, th thanks again, Dan, we, for those of us, uh, who are listening, thank you for participating. Uh, we will 
um, post this recording on our blog, you know, dot com slash blog, and and you can connect with Dan directly at um, Twitter. Stone at Stone MIT. So we have an MIT. We have an M, we have two smart people on this call, an MIT guy and a Harvard guy. And so right down the street. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, thanks again, Dan. Uh, anything else you'd like to add, um, add, Dan, before we wrap up? I think we covered a whole lot of content, and um, just to again start simple and add complexity only where you need it. All right, uh, Eric. Any final thoughts? Thank you, Dan. I'm going to be listening to the recording again to make sure that 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 we didn't miss anything on this end. Those were really really interesting. Updates. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan, for for your book contribution and for joining and for these really interesting updates. And really welcome. Thank you. Stay connected right, with, with Dan. Stay connected with us on the Enor blog, Analytics Breakthrough Webinar Series. Shout out to the Digital Analytics Association. If you haven't joined yet, please join. They do a lot of great advocacy and education for our industry. And if you haven't picked up a copy of the book yet, you could read Dan's contribution, everyone else's contribution, and all the other content in the book. We've gotten very positive feedback, so pick up a copy. So thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Ferris. And thank you especially to our participants. Bye-bye. Right. Have a good one.